Welcome to the Getting to Know Alexi video series brought to you by the Alexi Consortium. Today's video, Getting Around Firewalls and Network Security, is presented by Neil Forcier, Application Engineer with Agilent Technologies. My name is Neil Forcier, I'm Application Engineer with Agilent Technologies, and I'm talking to you from uh, Loveland, Colorado. Okay, so let me get started. Okay. Getting around firewalls and network security. So the idea too is that we're not doing anything wrong here. These are going to be ways that we can work around um, security hurdles and what are the trade-offs. So once again, when I try to access an instrument in my office or an instrument that it's connected to my private uh, switch or my private router, I don't have any problems because I'm on the local network of that router. Same if you have an instrument connected to your company's uh, intranet. I can access it because I don't have, because uh, I'm on that local network. But all of a sudden things become more difficult if my instrument's inside my company network and I'm outside of it. Or even if you're, you know, even if you're fortunate enough to work from home and you have a simple home router, if you try to access an instrument at home, sitting at a coffee shop, uh, you're not going to be able to do it. And the reason is, is by default, routers, the simplest case, is they block incoming network requests. They assume by default that all the devices on that router's local network are clients. So anything trying to connect from the outside is uh, they, they view it as, you know, attack or, or something uh, or security issue. So by default, routers block all incoming requests, and we'll talk about how to get by that. And then finally, the other kind of network layer that's hard to get through is the company's network security. IT police work really hard to make your network secure, and there's a lot of reasons out there they do that in, in uh, this this environment we have today on the on the uh, internet. So let me start first by talking about the personal router security. And like I said before, by default it assumes everything on its local network, that's the network in your home or your lab where you have the router set up, uh, is, is a client. So they're going to block the incoming connection requests, which is bad if we have an instrument on that on that router's network and we're trying to communicate it remotely from a, a PC or a smart device. How can we get around that? Well, routers typically have settings to uh, what I'll say poke holes in their firewall. And the idea is these settings can typically be accessed through the router's web interface. Just like an LXI instrument, routers typically have a web interface. Um, you know, if you're on its local network, you can connect to it. You, you know, the IP address will be in the, the manual, and you can change all of its settings and adjust settings and change them. Uh, the two things I'm going to talk about that allow us to poke holes in the router's firewall is a setting called DMZ, which actually stands for Demilitarized Zone, and Port Forwarding. Now, I'm just going to briefly cover these. If you want more information, you could go on the Internet and search, and there's tons of people talking about how to use these. The idea for DMZ is it's a way to place a server on your home network. Let's say you're at home and, and you want to host a website. Uh, they give you a way to do that. And what DMZ does is, remember, your router is going to have its own IP address to the outside Internet or the outside network world. And then it gives any device that's connected to its local network their own IP address but the outside network world can't see those devices. So if I want to connect to one of them, I have to first use the router's IP address. And what DMZ says is it tells the router, any incoming connection requests, send them to this local IP address. So if you have an instrument on your, your network, you can say, any anytime someone wants to connect, send it to this IP address and let it connect. Uh, which works. It's a, it's, a, it's a great system. There is some security concerns, of course. And also, it only allows you to set up one instrument that you can access remotely because DMZ is sending all connection requests to one IP address. You can't send all, all connection requests to multiple IP addresses. 
to do that, you would use port forwarding. And uh, not to get too deep into the network lingo is the idea is, you know, with LXI or with any network device we want to connect to, we use the device's IP address. But besides that, uh, on, the, on the network communication protocol, there's also different ports. So, you know, an IP address will take you to the instrument. The, uh, the ports will take you into different doors into the instrument. So port forwarding allows you to select the port you're going to forward that information to. So a port forwarding table would be, um, I want to connect to IP address this, and you specify, let's say, port 4000. The router's port forwarding, you could say, all connection requests coming to port 4000 send to local IP address blah and send it to port 5025, which is the instrument control uh, port for a lot of Agilent LXI instruments. Then you can set up uh, the same thing for port 4001. All connection requests coming for port 4001 send to local IP address blah, 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 5025 port. And so port forwarding allows you to set up a system where you can contact multiple instruments uh, on, that, on that router's uh, local, local network. And once again, for more on port forwarding, you can just go on the Internet. They have plenty on it. Um, once again, port forwarding is also a little more secure because you're using, you're typically going to use ports that aren't in the popular uh, network ports, none, none of the FTP ports or none of the Internet ports. You're not going to use any of those, uh, and that's where a lot of the attacks are coming from. Uh, also, too, a little bit more on as far as security to opening up these these features, these firewall features to, to instruments. Right now, as far as the research I've done, is if you have an instrument that's running a very primitive operating system, such as an embedded operating system, such as Windows CE, or, or anything like that, you're typically fine or, or safe from attacks. Um, because people aren't designing viruses specifically for those platforms or, or other uh, bad things uh, on the Internet. Where you have to worry is if you have an instrument that runs Windows, uh, you know, because then you could be targeted, Windows XP or, or whatever. And of course, if you have an instrument like that and you're using these methods to access it remotely, you want to be sure that it has, you know, virus protection uh, and plenty of security features activated. Okay, now let's talk about uh, company network security. Once again, your company works hard, the IT department works hard to protect your company's intranet from attack. How can we get around it? How can I be at the airport uh, and be on my laptop or be on my uh, iPad and actually gain access to um, an instrument data or instrument control? Well, of course I can use the VPN connection. That's sort of the uh, most obvious. But once again, you have to be at working at a company that allows you to connect an instrument to um, the company's intranet or network uh, to use the VPN. But the idea is if I have a VPN on my iPad or my laptop, I'm in, I'm essentially part of the company's network, and I can then access instruments on the company's network or computers that may be grabbing data from a test system, uh, and, and once again, I can remotely log into that computer. Uh, another way to do it is to use a cellular router. And once again, as long as the cellular router is not connected to your company's network, it is just to the instruments. You've created you know, a, a, a private network that's totally you know, disconnected from your company's network. And the idea is the same thing I talked about for the remote test is we can access that router as long as we know its IP address and as long as we set up port forwarding or DMZ, we can access devices on that router's network, such as a PC running a test system if we want to grab data from it, we want to remotely log into it, or, uh, you know, connect to a data acquisition instrument and run a test. Uh, we can, once again, connect to it through the cellular data router, meaning we don't have to worry about the company's network at all because we're totally disconnected from it. 
uh, and we can also use the cloud. And then another way to do it, a very secure way to do it, is to use a secure access services. And I'm going to talk about that on the next slide. Now, for this secure access services, I've only yet, at this point found one company doing this. Uh, there may be others. The company is uh, Lantronics, and they may they have a service. It's actually part product, part service called Access My Device. And what it is is if you have a device behind a firewall, whether it be a router, whether it be your company's network, what it does is it sells you a piece of hardware that you connect between your company's network and the device or the test system that you want to access remotely. That device, I believe it's referred to as a spider, turns whatever it's connected to from a server into a client. And how does it do that? Well, the service part of, of Access My Device is Lantronics maintains uh, a server where their spider is constantly sending uh, updates to that server. And the idea here is, remember, if you're on your company's network, your computer can connect to almost any website uh, outside because your company's network allows clients to freely access servers as long as they're not restricted uh, outside your network. So the idea is Lantronics has software running on their server where instead of accessing your device, you access their server, which, which gets in contact with the spider, and then you can access your instrument or your test system. It's pretty cool, and you can go to their um, – their site to learn more. The service, of course, has a monthly charge, but what's great about it is it has security password logins where you register MAC addresses to devices that are allowed to access whatever device you're connecting to their service. So once again, it's, it's fairly secure uh, as far as accessing test systems or instruments outside of your company's network. And this is also a great setup if you're working with multiple companies, uh, maybe you're the manufacturer, maybe you're the R&D guy, and you want to give uh, outside companies or outside organizations that you're working with access to test data. And also, one last note on this, too, is you can actually buy the software and, and, and host the software on a company server if you didn't want to use the Lantronics monthly subscription. Okay, so we're doing good. We're, about, we're at the last section. Uh, the rise of smart devices in the cloud.